Hi, I'm Ginger Holt and I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Vanderbilt Medical Center who specializes in the care of bone and soft tissue masses, lumps, bumps, that turn out to be sarcomas. Sarcomas are highly malignant tumors of the musculoskeletal system that arise from bone, muscle, fat, or other cells from the mesenchymal line. They often present as lumps, bumps, or masses in patients and are confused with lipomas. Three-dimensional imaging discerns whether these are lipomas or not, and we feel are very important in distinguishing these masses. Why is this important? Well, patients who have these masses uh, excised when they shouldn't be have an exponentially higher rate of local recurrence and distant disease. This is an example of a patient who had a nine centimeter mass removed from his leg. It turned out to be a sarcoma. He had bleeding up and down the leg, as you can see from our arrows and unfortunately had to undergo a massive re-excision, free flap coverage, radiation therapy to the leg, and had a much worse outcome and a much higher chance of local recurrence than had he been recognized to have a sarcoma and had a complete full excision as a single surgery. This is not unique to my practice. The literature shows up to half of patients can have an unplanned excision or whoops surgery when the physician is unaware that they are removing a highly malignant tumor thinking it's just a lipoma. In our practice, 33% of patients on average, or one out of every three patients, has an incomplete excision of a sarcoma. We've asked ourselves, why does this occur? And how does the patient, how does the physician, and how does the interaction between the two within our medical system create this problem, and how can we possibly eliminate it? Patients who live a distance from a high-level sarcoma center potentially don't want to travel, or they ask their surgeon to try to be more efficient and don't do a biopsy separately from removing a mass. We find that patients and physicians also don't understand the consequences. In looking at this, we tried to look at patients and their distance from a sarcoma center and whether this affected their care. We found it did not. Neither insurance status nor the distance from a sarcoma center created a problem in patient getting appropriate care. What about the cost? How does the system play into the exponential rising cost of health care and how can we help? Well, we find that if a patient presents appropriately to a surgeon skilled in taking care of sarcomas, they have a much higher chance of a single excision as opposed to the patient who presents with an uh, a surgeon with less experience undergoes an incomplete excision that cost almost doubles. Well, if we can't disincentivize the patient or the system, what about the physician and how do they have a role? Patients only have uh, an incentive to take care of themselves, but physicians get incentives by doing surgery. They get paid. They rarely get sued for mistakes. We wanted to know, does a lack of education in the physician population play into this, and where does that occur? We did a study looking at general surgery and orthopedic surgery residency programs in the United States and asked what influence of education is there in correctly diagnosing sarcomas. What we found was that general surgery programs showed a deficit in direct training, but their standardized board training allowed them to successfully learn over time how to diagnose and care for a sarcoma. We found that there were two issues. One, we weren't uh, targeting the right audience, and two, we could do better with our education profile. Why can't we get it right? Great question. We have found that rigorous education programs for orthopedic surgeries have diminished the uh, referral base and incomplete excisions. Orthopedic surgeons have multi-levels of training, both board standardization training and in programs, and we have seen a significant drop in the incomplete excision of soft tissue sarcomas. But we have found we do have to target the right groups and provide the right education. Could we disincentivize physicians? Could we show that physicians who get sued more may be a greater target audience for education? In looking at over 30 years of medical malpractice data, we found that not only are the number of claims on the rise for soft tissue sarcomas, but primary care physicians were the group that were most likely to be named defendants in sarcoma-related litigation. Orthopedic surgeons and radiologists still had higher likelihood of litigation, but we were surprised to find that primary care physicians were most commonly named defendants. 
We also see that sarcoma litigation, when it occurs and the payout occurs, that the cost is significantly higher. So these rare tumors often have egregious errors that occur and juries pay out a significant amount of money uh, to, the, to the plaintiffs. Our studies have shown that there are significant opportunities that exist. Simple guidelines can be followed to evaluate and treat soft tissue sarcomas and that we need to target the right audience, surgeons, primary care physicians, and not just our own field of orthopedic surgeons. There are also opportunities financially with insurance companies and our government to dissuade surgeons from operating on lumps, bumps, or masses until they have followed a simple protocol for evaluation. We ask that a mass that is bigger than a, a golf ball, about five centimeters, has a history of growth or is deep to the superfascia, undergo three-dimensional imaging. If an ultrasound is all that's available, the ultrasound is helpful in determining the size of the mass, that it's five centimeters or bigger, and should undergo a greater scrutiny, pre preferably three-dimensional imaging with an MRI scan. A mass in this category should undergo a biopsy to evaluate the mass for possibly being a soft tissue sarcoma, not a lipoma. My email is at the bottom of the slide. If you have any questions, please let me know.